Hard Chat. Welcome to Hard Chat. I'm joined by a legend of TV, Rove McManus. Thanks for joining me. A pleasure. Thank you, Tom. Let's chat. Hard. It's exciting to get that in the face. It's powerful, isn't it? It's very powerful, yeah. yeah. Now, you started hosting Rove Live at the age of 25. What was it like to peak so early? Look, it was a joy. It was nice to know that um, my best work was already well and truly behind me by the time I hit my 30s. Yeah, you just got success over and done with. Yeah, it's nice to be washed up uh, as soon as possible. You won 16 Logies, three of them are gold. When Grant Daniel got the gold Logie, did you want to hand them back in? Uh, no, no. In fact, that's... I'm going to be honest, that's kind of why I'm here. I'm hoping... Do you think I can do it with this segment? I, I assume that's what happens. Was it always your dream to become the new Daryl Summers? <laughs> the answer is actually no, not at all. Do you not respect Daryl like I do? I absolutely respect Daryl. He was one of the first proper famous people I got to meet when, uh, when I was at Channel 9, and he took me out for lunch. Some would say he kidnapped me, mm. but uh, I made it out alive. And then his show was, was cancelled, like, th that year, so... And here I am. You won the Gold Logie three times in a row. I did. And now Channel 10's making you do a pilot. Mm. When you heard that, were you like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got three Gold Logies over here. Yeah. Just, just give me the series. Maybe they feel I still have something to prove to get elusive lo Gold Logie number four. Mm. If a tree falls in the forest and no one hears it, would it have more listeners than your radio show? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it would. That was an interesting experience, that one. Mm. It was great to sort of get up early every morning. And be ignored. And be, and be ignored <laughs> and wonder, why the hell am I doing this? Now, you've ruled out a return to breakfast radio. Hasn't the radio industry done that for you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> in, indeed they have. We, uh, we came in and, and went out very quickly. Was it hard to host Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader when you're not? <laughs> yeah, well, the good news is I never had to answer any of the questions. Right. And the problem was most of the kids on that show um, would beat me up for my lunch money. Now, you occasionally appear on The Project. Occasionally, yes. A show that you own. Yes. Do you find it hard to give yourself a gig? No, it's easier to sleep with the boss yep. to get the gig. What, just um, a wank? Just a wank? Yeah. <laughs> and then sometimes I've even done that and said, no, you can't be on the show. <laughs> it's a tough business. That's harsh. TV can be harsh. I know, right? Now, one of your best-known segments on Rove Live was What The? Yes. A catchphrase is easier to write than jokes. <laughs> yes. Well, even easier than writing jokes is just having people send you in fruit that looks like penises and borderline racist menus where you take someone's native tongue and make it suggest it could be a rude word. Now I think about it, it was quite an inappropriate segment back in the day. Speaking of inappropriate, you know your catchphrase, say hi to your mum for me? Yes. Was the subtext that you had rooted people's mums? <laughs> it's not, but... Well, it's a bit like, say hi to your mum for me, because the last time I saw her... <laughs> say hi to your mum for me, wink. I'm say hi talking... to your mum for me, if you know what I mean. If you know what I mean. <laughs> because I had sex with her... And she enjoyed it. If you know what I mean. <laughs> because I had sex with your mum. It's catchy. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for chatting. Hard! Oh, and um, say hi to your mum for me. Because <laughs> Tom had sex with her. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah. Ah, chat.